The area of Nurum is made up of smaller sections which have their own gangs. Because there are so many different smaller gangs, I will not be diving into specific smaller gangs in this case, we will be focusing on the divide of this borough. Nurum is often referenced by rappers from there as Northside Nurum or Southside Nurum. The divide is quite complex, but the gangs in Northside are thought to be allies and the gangs in Southside are thought to be allies. The gangs in Northside refer to themselves as 7th and the gangs in Southside refer to themselves as 6th. These two sides would ultimately end up in a deadly conflict on numerous occasions. In Northside Nurem, where rappers such as CB would grow up, the area would have gangs at least dating back to 2003, where a gang known as the E7 Crips would be the earliest iteration of the 7th Gang Alliance, also being a large gang made up of several smaller gangs. For the sake of time, I will not go deep into each specific person and what smaller gang they are in, as there are many members who have not been convicted of crimes. However, I will go through the crimes and events which have been linked to this gang war across Nurem. This war has been going on for well over a decade. There may have been tensions and rivalries prior to this event, but this is thought to be the first time that this beef would become deadly. In January of 2009, a tragedy would unfold which would shock the Northside Nurem area. A charity event was taking place which was focused on campaigning against knife crime in the black community. This was held at a church. Stephen Lewis, known in the streets as Captain, would attend this charity event. He was just 15 years old at the time, but he was thought to be part of a Northside Nurem based gang or at least affiliated. He would make his way outside of the event with his younger 13 year old brother. At the same time, a group of Southside Nurem members were trying to gain entry into the party to gatecrash it. A boy who was with the Southside Nurem group and was 17 at the time would be overheard in the commotion saying, I've got this thing and I'm going to use it. His name was Chris Mazakelua. The Southside Nurem gang members would spot Stephen and begin to chase him. Whether this was to do with an ongoing beef between areas is unclear. However, what happened next would change the future of the whole borough of Nurem. They saw around 100 young people, teenagers they think, gathered out on this street after this party finished. The party itself was in a church centre next door to the church here in Plaston. It finished, as we heard there, at about 10.30 and uh, all these young people were out on the street. Some neighbours have said that there didn't seem to be any tension amongst them. Others have said that they thought something might happen and of course it did. The police came here on a routine patrol and they uh, discovered this large group that uh, dispersed when they saw them and it was then that they discovered this 15-year-old boy with stab wounds to his chest. He died just before midnight in hospital. Those two arrests were made only a few hours later in the early hours of the morning. It's not clear whether those that they arrested were part of that large group or not but the police all day have been continuing their investigation here. They've been looking at the site itself. They've had ladders, uh, whether they're trying to retrieve a weapon or not. Again, we don't know. All we've heard from the police is that they want people to come forward with any information, which with this kind of thing can be difficult. Young people who may not want to come forward for whatever reason, but that's what they need. They need information that could provide a clue that helps them catch the person that killed this boy. A witness who saw the following moments would say that they saw a large group of around 50 to 100 kids screaming and shouting, and there was a lot of running around. In the midst of the commotion, Stephen, who was just 15 at the time, was chased and brutally stabbed twice by Chris. Tragically, Stephen would die from his wounds at the scene of the crime. His 13-year-old brother would witness it, and his sister who was just 16 was holding him as he lay dying on the floor. The court during this case would be told that Chris would even celebrate his attack by gleefully saying, I did the murder, I did it, I did the stabbing. This murder of a young boy would seemingly be the beginning of a long and bloody war which would evolve into the conflict happening today in Newham. And just 18 months after this tragedy, another gruesome murder would take place. But this time, it would be members from the Northside Newham gang who would have blood on their hands. Stephen, as we just discussed, was said to have had ties with a gang from Northside Newham whose members were mostly school-aged teenagers. It's unclear exactly the depth that they were in the streets at the time of Stephen's death, but one thing is for certain is that they were looking for revenge. A large group from Northside Newham would be travelling around, some on foot and others on bicycles with around 20 of their members. Many of them, if not all of them, were armed. One of these was actually the best friend of Stephen who had been killed 18 months earlier. His name was Jurel, who was 19 at the time. The gang would eventually spot a 16-year-old named Ailton Oliveira who was cycling home in the early hours of the morning after attending a party. The group from Northside Newham suspected that Ailton was part of the Southside Newham gang However, it has been disputed by media reports and stated that he was an affiliate and not a member. They would chase Ailton and eventually drag him off his bike and beat him up severely. 
In desperation, Elton would flee and bang on the door of a house, but the lone woman inside was too afraid to open the door. The gang would see this and stop for a minute to assess the situation, when they had noticed another person in their house seemingly on the phone to the police. In this time, Elton would stumble across the road and bang at another house pleading for help. Sadly, he would not be helped and the gang were free to continue their attack. The gang would hit Elton with metal bars and other weapons. Neighbours who heard the commotion said that they heard what sounded like metal bars smacking off of walls. One resident said he saw a large gang attacking someone and that everyone in the group was involved in the melee. Elton would not only be struck and beaten by the group, but was also stabbed at least 10 times. Tragically, he would go on to lose his life. A brutal murder over what was said to be a mere affiliation to a Southside Newham gang. Multiple people would be charged for this murder, including Stephen Lewis's best friend, Jarrell. Now that Northside Newham had seemingly got revenge for their slain member, the ongoing beef would quickly escalate. Champion Gander was a member of a Northside Newham gang. However, he had once been an Arsenal youth football team trainee and had begun a music career under the rap name Chrome. On May the 9th of 2013, Champion and his friend would be walking near a primary school when a cab carrying three people from Southside Newham would spot them. Armani Lynch was one of the three men in the cab who had jumped out to confront Champion and his friend. A fight would break out likely due to the confrontation and during this time Armani Lynch would brandish a knife and would go on to stab Champion's friend Shaquille twice. In a frenzied attack, Armani would also stab Champion at least 11 times outside of a primary school in broad daylight. The primary school children were on a lunch break at the time but would not witness the attack, however three of their teachers would see the horrific incident play out. Armani would quickly flee the area after the stabbings. He would tuck the bloodstained knife up his sleeve before quickly getting rid of the weapon and bloody clothes. Armani was overheard in KFC later on that day, bragging about the stabbings. During the trial of the murder, Armani would be laughing and joking with his friends during court. This would understandably lead to Champion's mother being outraged and stating that Armani acts like he is special and is enjoying life, which is something that Champion is not able to do. But in a crazy twist of events, Armani from Southside Newham would only be given 14 years and charged with manslaughter instead of murder despite the fact he had a long criminal history and had been previously arrested for having a knife. This is even more shocking considering that the court had even heard a transcript of Armani ringing his friends, telling them to make sure that there was loads of them at court to intimidate the family and the witnesses. Unfortunately, this would not be the last of the brutal attacks that would take place across the streets of Newham. But in 2015, both sides of Newham would see new talents rising, with rappers like Kojo Funz coming from Southside and Jay Huss coming from Northside. This would usher in a new time where beef would become even more known to the nation due to the fact that these two rappers' ongoing issues would spill from the streets into music. Jay Huss would make a diss track towards Kojo Funz where he would rap. Little Kojo scared, little Kojo stressing, Kojo ran off, left his blessings, left his pride, left his brethren, Kojo's lion, time for confessions, Kojo what, Kojo who, Kojo who, I make more funds than you. Jay Huss, real name Mamadou, had been stabbed previously to this by a member of Southside Newark and a notorious picture would circulate of him throwing up gang signs dissing the area custom house which is meant to be where the stabber is from. Kojo would use the picture of Jay Huss in hospital for a cover art of his diss track back to Jay Huss where he would rap in response Ah, why you lying though? Mama do, better lay low when I say so. He would go on to say, fuck the other side in reference to his opposition and saying he'd make someone's chest decline. Although Jay Huss and Kojo were not drill rappers, this musical feud could be seen as the start of a rap beef which would go on to become legendary in the eyes of many UK drill fans and I am of course talking about the back and forth diss tracks between Northside Newham or 7th and Southside Newham or 6th. There were honestly too many to mention unless of course you want a full breakdown of every single one in which case leave a comment below but it does have to be said that in 2017 back at these times most UK rappers were not making much money from music however with success seen by the likes of Jay Huss at the time and the current success of many UK drill rappers it does raise the question as to what position many of the people who ended up dead or in jail would have been in if some kind of peace was agreed to. The next person who would go on to lose their lives in this ongoing war may be a name you've heard often. As most your fans know, in this genre of music, it's very common to reference people who have been killed. Between the two sides, I don't think any person who was killed has been mentioned in diss tracks more than who we're about to discuss. On the 2nd of April in 2017, at around 3.20pm, 
a member of Southside Newham known as Gwina, real name Ahmed Jar, would go into a shop and purchase a lighter. He left the shop but he would return 30 seconds later being chased by a person wearing a balaclava and gloves. The person chasing Gwina would end up stabbing him once in the hand and fatally stabbing him through the heart. The killer would run out of the shop and get back into a black Mercedes which was stolen a few days earlier. This murder is still unsolved to this day, with the police offering a £20,000 reward for information related to the murder investigation. Rumours would circulate about who the killer of Grinner was, but so far there was no concrete facts to support any of the accusations and they seem to just be fans of the drill scene coming to their own conclusion. If the name Grinner sounds familiar to you and you can't quite put your finger on why, the reason is because he's been brought up as a way to taunt his friends by several Northside Newham rappers. These include songs by CGE, Trips. Then should have seen the way he quit. But that's all for the cause, of course. Up way back to his next, who's next? Make a wrong move, get splashed at your locals like when I lost his breath. Sinner and Tweeko freestyle. Oh, let me talk my shit. All the smoke man's giving all the tours I did. How many man more, I think? Sangu, no roar and slim, and his little bro sure don't swim. S13, 13 freestyle. Tell us all disrespect. I already said fuck em. Violet, get back immediate effect. No, they ain't on nothing. Better talk like East Bro Killers ain't. C1, 7th plugged in freestyle. It can never be on my PR. Joy both gang got both. What's that, bro? Family affair has two, two snitches still on things. Still don't know what's happening there, free. Sinner, disrespect to. Two less than man bad as each other. Incredible. Wow. Gang got both grins, one rose, his first is terrible. Mm. Chips got smooch and I fill up his tank. Yes. This got both same month, it's horrible. Rewind back couple months that year. Grins got done in the shop, historical hearse for costumes. Gang got skanking, he got shanked. I chase got into Timbuktu. Running. If he wasn't so fast that day, Grinny, he would've came and bucked you. Yanko, jail freestyle. Ahmed Joss still lives in my lungs. No one gets me high like Grinner. His mum misses him so much but she can't see him unless it's a picture Cause he got stabbed and his torso opened up like the legs of Jamie's sister Yanko, Custom K There's a pool of blood from killings And check out the news who's winning Yank said let's raise hell while Grin is in hell with his younger sibling S13, plugged in freestyle But there ain't riding, I don't understand what all the hype is My right hand got a bit still smiling, bro Up and light him Yanko Painting a picture. Free JT, he's riding a bird. These birds have wings, but they don't fly. Got killed in his local shop. The shopkeeper just left him to die. Yanko, hurting's fun. Bro, bro caught two special K's. We might as well call him a serial killer. Say that your gang mash work on my batch, but I bet you could have put it on grim. I heard my. And that concludes the diss tracks. Honestly, there's many other diss tracks referencing more dead people. The story continues to get crazier and crazier, but I focused on these disses towards Grinner in particular because he has probably been name dropped more times than anybody else in this particular beef which spilled into music. We've all seen other rappers from London and Chicago gain notoriety quickly by mocking dead people in their songs. Whether it's the likes of 1011 referencing T-Wiz or it's a member of O Block referencing Tuka, it's clearly become a huge trend to disrespect dead enemies in the drill genre. This is almost one of the unique selling points of drill music. When I was growing up listening to rap music, people were not this direct with their statements. This makes me raise the question, is all of this because of real, pure, unadulted hatred for one's dead enemies, or is this an attempt to gain fame, respect and notoriety within this genre of music? What do you think? But returning to Newham, the deadly rivalry would continue, but not all of those who would be caught up in the crossfire were gang members. Unfortunately, from time to time, people are killed by gangs who have absolutely nothing to do with the gang violence. This next case would be a case of mistaken identity. On the 25th of August 2019, Abdul Mayanja would spend some time at a barbecue. He was not a gang member, in fact he was a former RAF cadet and he was just 19 years of age. He had attended a barbecue with some friends, but at some point he would leave the barbecue and end up sat on a wall in Stratford talking to a female. Then, a Nissan Qashqai would be driving nearby carrying at least two passengers who were linked to Southside Newham. They were both 25 years old and named Sean Obazi and Braden Henry. They would spot Abdul sitting on the wall and make a fatal mistake. They had approached Abdul to confront him. During this time, they asked Abdul, what ends are you from? But before Abdul would even have the chance to answer them, one of the pair blasted Abdul in the chest with a sawn off shotgun. The gunmen would return to the Nissan, which would be found the next day having been set on fire and burnt out. Sadly, Abdul would lose his life. An innocent teenager, sitting on a wall, talking to a friend, gunned down in cold blood. There's a saying that people often use in times like this where they say, wrong place, wrong time. 
This saying should only really be used when talking about active gang members because nowhere should be the wrong place for a civilian on the streets of England. As for the killers of Abdul, they would receive 30 and 31 years in prison when they were charged for the murder. Sean Obazi, upon hearing his conviction for murder of Abdul, would collapse in court. Sean would go out to scream out, I did not know them, I did not do it, what the fuck fam, I did not do it. The two men found guilty would admit to being in the car before the murder but would insist that they were not responsible. The murder of Abdul was a mistaken identity case, but the intended target was said to have shot a drug dealer named Heracles Simos. Heracles' two cousins would almost be charged for the murder of Abdul, but both Alex and Marvin Simos would be cleared of the murder and of manslaughter. Alex Simos had identified Sean Obazi and Bryden as the gunmen responsible. When Sean and Bryden were found guilty, Alex was smiling and nodding while Marvin laughed and stuck his tongue out. It's unclear whether these two were active gang members, but one thing is for sure, the streets of Newham are not safe for the people who have to live there, and yet again the war would continue. At this time the ongoing conflict in Newham had not received much national coverage, but what would transpire next would shock the entire country of England. CJ, real name Corey Davis Jr was 13 in 2016. He would be approached by older people and asked to deal drugs. Presumably, he would feel pressured by this as he would end up telling his mother. CJ had grown up as a good kid but would be prescribed medication for ADHD when he was 10 and this would seemingly begin to change the attitude within him. At one point, he even had thoughts of taking his own life before he was even 14. He would become increasingly distant from his family and one day in 2016 he would go missing. His mother would keep ringing him to get hold of him but she was unsuccessful. This led to her giving the police his phone number. He eventually would make a deal with his mother to come home by the next Sunday. But when Sunday came, CJ came back home and he looked tired and he had dark eye rings under his eyes as if he had not slept. He had bags of stuff that his mother had not seen before and he looked itchy. He looked drained according to his mother, but he did not want to tell his mother where he had been. He ended up going into his room and then his uncle came in and spoke to him. But again, he would not tell his uncle where he had been but CJ's uncle would seemingly confiscate 480 pounds of cash from CJ. Then CJ's mother would come into the room and say, none of this belongs to you and she took his bags of clothes from him, saying that she had not bought them for him. This was seemingly a family intervention as CJ's grandma would also have a deep conversation with him and make it clear that he has to choose between his family and the people outside. He had disappeared for a week and come back with 480 pounds. Clearly this was something he had been exploited to do for older people. His mother wanted to build trust with her son but CJ would tell his mother that he does not want to speak about it. His mother would apply to the council to be moved and speak to the council workers and do whatever she could to get away from the area but was sadly unsuccessful. His mother feared for his life and for him being exploited and eventually CJ would go to live with his grandfather in the Forest Gate area of Newham. His mum would mention in interviews that the majority of the time this stuff was happening, CJ's voice had not even broken yet, which indicates just how young he was. He was literally a child at this point. It was clear that CJ was going through a change in his lifestyle choices. He had struggled between spending time with family and being stuck in the streets, seemingly being pressured. Growing up, he was caught carrying a knife and arrested for multiple offences, including carrying a bottle of acid prior to the events that would soon take place. Elsewhere, in mid-August of 2017, a UK drill rapper and Southside Newham member would be stabbed multiple times and shot. He would go on to survive. He is accused of being a leader of a gang in Southside Newham, or the 6th. Due to Young Diz having a popular name in the streets, it would be obvious to many that revenge was just around the corner, but we will get back to him later. On the 3rd of September 2017, CJ, Corey Davis Jr. would be on a playground in Forest Gate area of Newham. He had arranged that day to go to his mother's for Sunday dinner but had convinced her to buy him a pizza and get it delivered to his grandfather's house instead. His mother said that she had a feeling that something was going to happen. She assumed he would be arrested again due to his behaviour. However, CJ would have a far worse fate. CJ would be standing in a playground talking to one of his friends. A Range Rover was in the area. CJ was spotted and unfortunately shots were fired and sadly, 14 year old CJ would be struck in the head. He lost his life. The killers have not yet been found but arrests have been made as recent as 2023. We had previously discussed the diss songs aimed at Grinner. At this point it may seem obvious that the drill genre overall seems to have no rules in what people rap about, especially as although CJ was just 14 years old. He would also be mocked in songs by rappers and alleged members of Southside Newham or Six. Songs that would diss CJ 
by ACG, Mazen Banks, Tweeko and Castro, The Cold Room, YACG, Respawn, Young Diz and Striker, Time Will Tell, Y Grinner, Freestyle Video. So they can't be here winning. Hey, now who are you fucking kidding? My nigga, your heart ain't fucking in it. I can separate the raw from the vape. Niggas nowadays will kill to bit pay like. Niggas nowadays will snake their own mates. Me and you were born different. We ain't born the same way. Uh, niggas make money online, get a free consent. That's a deal or rhythm. Like Ben 10, you were out on a mission. And we see you up at the vape. In a minute, you cost them bits. Go to me and Rose in a fucking sick. Tell you guys is a fucking bitch if you dare run away, then you only got a hit. Yeah. CJ got hit in his wig. Where is he at now? I don't know, know where he is. is. Hey. My man got chopped in his wig. The butcher shop was a fucking sick. Hey. No hook, ACG. But it would seem that CJ had some friends who were at least involved, but they would consider him not to have been a gang member in their eyes. With the response to people disrespecting CJ, a Northside Newham rapper would try to clear things up. On S13 Custom Juice, S13 would rap that Southside Newham Pepper on Free May really trying to air it up. Niggas wanna diss CJ, first things first, let me clear it up. That's my little bro, but I swear that he weren't involved. So all this talk, you're like you're smoking on ops, rude boy, you ain't smoking on a soul. After the murder of CJ, Rapper Young Diz and prominent members of Southside Newham known as the Twins would be arrested for this but would be released not long afterwards. Again, this would turn into a tale of revenge. CJ's friends would set out to kill. The war in Newham would continue. As we may have seen, music would still be used by both sides of this ongoing beef and you might wonder how people could be so heartless to name a 14 year old boy being murdered disrespectfully in a song. There is no real way for the average person to contemplate why but in the words of the self-proclaimed devil himself, Young Diz, he would have a question to ask about people's thoughts on him dissing CJ. He would ask, what about Promise, that guy's a civilian in Ent? And he's referring to a young man named Promise in Kenda. Promise, much like CJ, would have been referred to people in his area as a civilian, or at least somebody that has very, very loose ties to gang members. On the 14th of February in 2018, various members of a Northside Nurem gang would steal a BMW from a woman. This may sound like just a carjacking, but the group would be accused of having premeditated intentions due to the fact that they would use latex gloves and decide to turn off their mobile phones. The gang of teenagers, ages ranging from 14 to 17 years old at the time, would be inside the BMW for some time. One of the passengers was wearing a tag monitor on his leg due to being involved in previous drug dealing offences. The gang would search for their enemies and in what seems to be a case of mistaken identity, would see the then 19 year old Promise walking along the pavement with his two friends. The car approached them from behind and would drive into Promise in an obvious attempt to injure him. Promise would be forced onto the bonnet and would attempt to flee from the attackers, but the attackers would burst out of the car and chase Promise. They were armed with at least one knife. Promise was caught up to and cornered by the gang. He would be viciously stabbed repeatedly, with some of the wounds being very deep it's clear that a lot of force was used. Promise would be stabbed in the thigh, upper arm, chest, head and also in the face. He was stabbed at least 15 times in total and tragically he would pass away. He was clearly killed in a case of mistaken identity in a completely frenzied attack that is horrific to say the least. This war has seen many lives lost and promise, much like the other deceased, would be missed dearly by many. His funeral would be uploaded to YouTube by a channel called Top African News. <laughs> Please, you gotta move the start now, please. To, to teach Demain, ça sera qui? Et ça sera comment? And then tomorrow, what would it be like? Que la gloire soit rendue à Dieu. I think it's important to show the reality of how this lifestyle goes. Sadly, the fact remains that street beefs, which may have started from petty disputes, can turn so deadly that whole communities are not safe in the streets that they live in for generation. Promise has lost his life without even being involved and his killers would not be free in the streets for long. In fact, they would go on to be sentenced to a range between 14 and 18 years and one of these happens to be another name that many Draw fans will know. His name is Vando. Vando was pictured here at the funeral of CJ. It's crazy how CJ was known to be a civilian who is not an active gang member and so is Promise, yet in a presumed attempt to get revenge for CJ, he would actually end up killing a civilian. 
As we have seen before, music has played some part in all of this, whether it's been used as a form of artistic expression about reality or used as a taunt to provoke enemies. The reason the name may be familiar to Jewel fans is because Vando gets a lot of shout outs by his assumed friend Yanko on Jewel tracks, with one song even being named Free Vando. Songs that he was shouted out on include Free Vando by Yanko, KZ and Yanko Can't Rate, Yanko No Hook, Yanko Lightwork Freestyle. As crazy as all of this is, this is the reality for many of these artists in the UK jewel scene. Not only do they use music as a way to provoke enemies, they also use it as a way to show respect to their friends and dead friends. As time would pass, artists would see much success, one of those being CB, hailing from Northside Newham. It doesn't seem like music would fulfil CB enough however, as he would still have one foot in the streets. At the stage that CB was in in his career, he would have had an opportunity to walk away and leave everything behind but he would soon make headlines all over the country, and it wasn't for his music. In case you don't know who he is, let me give you a quick rundown. He rose to fame quickly in the genre of UK drill when he dropped the song Take That Risk. This song would be removed from YouTube numerous times, with there being several re-uploads since then, but it would still have massive success and it would go on to be featured in the film Blue Story. He would go on to continue making music and as you might remember from earlier, he would be gritty and relentless in the way that he would disrespect his enemies, including the dead. As well as being a musician, he was an active member of the Northside Newham Alliance. On the 26th of July in 2018, CB would be in a BMW and would clearly be on his way at least to find somebody to attack. He would be wearing a clown mask and four of us in the BMW would have their faces either partially or fully covered. All five of them would be wearing gloves. CB was armed with a shotgun and there were also knives, an axe and a machete on the others. This could have been the end of one or maybe more people's lives that night but the police would have other plans. At some point on the car's journey, the police would pursue them. CB would for some reason decide to point the shotgun at the police, with the police reacting frantically. Eventually, the car came to a stop and the occupants had run away, but four of them were caught. One man did manage to escape and remains free to this day. CB and the four other men would go on to receive 23 years each in total. They were all known to have criminal records and said to be involved in the Northside Newham gang. This would not be the end of CB's music career however because later on that year he would release an album and then sometime later he would release a joint project with none other than Jay Huss. It would seem that Jay Huss would keep himself relatively far from the gang activity and this would keep him out of trouble for most of the time but he did have some issues going to prison for carrying knives. Young Diz, who is in the opposing Sits gang, aka Southside Newham, would be next to find himself in legal troubles. This would go on to be such a huge story that Young Diz would literally have a documentary made about him due to accusations against him for exploiting young people to do crimes on his benefit. How did yet another drill rapper make such an impact on the country to where he became a household name for being at a time the most disrespectful rapper in the whole of the country and a serious gang leader who would end up showing that his dark side does not just show through music. Young Diz would lose his mother at a very young age. This would clearly impact him in a huge way. He would rap about her in a heartfelt Tim Westwood freestyle. Again, he would express sorrow on a freestyle this time on the Black Box platform where he would openly talk about his family issues growing up having uncles in prison and saying he had no older brother to walk him through flats which is a clear statement that he feels he brought himself up in the streets to some extent. He goes on to bluntly but powerfully say how his mother passed away recently and it's genuinely touching. In this freestyle, Young Diz would also mention that Potter Paper had told him to keep writing. It's a shame that he never listened to that advice and took the latter advice from another friend telling him to keep writing. He was clearly showcasing a talent for music and would continue to do so. However, it wouldn't be an introspective heartfelt rap career going forward. At some point, Young Diz would become known as the devil of drill for his disrespectful lyrics. This change up of style of music seems to have symmetry of how he would act in life considering the case that he would soon be found guilty of. As we discussed earlier, Young Diz was stabbed several times and shot in one single occasion. This kind of trauma, losing a mother and being in a gang infested streets of Southside Newham for most of his life would seemingly spur him to spiral out of control. The police would say that Young Diz had spent a number of weeks grooming young teenagers by buying them food and even lending them money before eventually encouraging them to engage in torture. They said that Young Diz used drill music to glorify crimes to teenagers as young as 14. He would tell them that drill music is real life, not art. 
According to reports, this would entice him to leave behind a life of school, football and normal activities to seek a life of crime. For an unknown reason, young Diz would convince a group of these kids, two 14-year-olds and two 16-year-olds, to assist him in a kidnap, but this would be of another teenager, a 16-year-old boy. So on the 2nd of August in 2018, one of the teenagers made contact with the 16-year-old and they agreed to meet. Young Diz and the four teenagers pulled up to meet him in a Ford Mondeo. The 16-year-old was immediately punched in the head and body and told to get into the car. While in the car, he was threatened with a machete and he had two plastic bags tied over his head and secured with a rubber band. At this point, the 16-year-old was sure that he was going to die. He was driven to the home of one of the teenagers where he would be humiliated and tortured. He was forced to take off his clothes as Young Diz filmed him and threatened to cut him up. The 16-year-old was then hit with a metal pole over his face, arms, legs and back, causing cuts. Young Diz tried to pour boiling water on him but for whatever reason was not successful. But he would make the victim swallow a cannabis joint and make several threats involving scissors. I'm sure we can use our imagination for that one. His parents were called and he was forced to beg for £1,500 to be released. The gang would bank on the idea that he would not snitch but he was scared for his life and he would tell his family what happened. This would lead to all four of them being arrested. Young Diz would be sentenced to 12 and a half years for these crimes and the teenagers would get off of sentences ranging from two and a half years to three and a half years. Two of the youths in the case with Young Diz would be released in 2019 and just a couple of weeks later, they would show that the Youth Offenders Institution did not reform them whatsoever. The two teenagers both had tag monitors on them. However, according to reports, they were looking for revenge due to an older fellow gang member having been stabbed a few days prior. In the afternoon of August the 26th in 2019, the two teenagers would be driving a stolen Ford, wearing black clothes, latex gloves and having their faces covered. They would set upon an unsuspecting 18 year old named Santiago Angelo aka Star 9. Santiago was said to have links with Northside Newham gangs, however this has been disputed by the gang and even by his family about how deep he was involved. He had been arrested in 2018 for a stabbing but was not seen to be gang related and members of the gang would post on Snapchat around the time that he was not Mandem, referring to the gang as Mandem. Santiago's friend would run away from the scene and make his way to his nearby home out of fear. Santiago, however, would not be as lucky. The two teenagers would attack him with machetes in a savage attack where he was slashed and stabbed multiple times in the neck and back. He would be heard screaming, help me, but tragically, he would collapse on the pavement and go on to lose his life. The two teenagers would go on to receive 16 years and 18 years, making both of their sentences as long as the time that either of them had been alive. One of the attackers would allegedly be overheard while on remand bragging to inmates, saying, the machete got stuck in his head, yeah, the blood splashed on my face. When I pulled the knife out of his head, the blood was a mad thing. Then I shanked him again, it was funny, my man was laughing. One of those listening responded, it's like music to my ears. Then he said, crying for his mum and mockingly imitated him, shouting in a high voice, mummy, mummy, mummy. Prosecution, Mr. Hallam, told jurors, the other prisoners were laughing and pretending to fall over from laughter. It's crazy how just two weeks after these kids are released, not only are they out killing somebody, but one of them seems to show absolutely no remorse. Shootings and stabbings would be all too familiar to the residents of Newham. This would not be the last time that this gang war between Northside and Southside would have deadly results. And yet again, another innocent civilian would be caught up in the crossfire. Four members of a Northside Newham gang would be looking for their enemies on the 26th of April in 2020. It's clear that they were looking for somebody due to the following facts. They had turned off their mobile phones, they were in a stolen car with fake license plates, a sock was used to stop fingerprints being put on the steering wheel and the gang had each carried with them a change of clothes with two of them wearing sunglasses and masks. The gang would drive around and eventually spot somebody they assumed was a rival gang member. This moment is captured on CCTV. The man depicted in CCTV would escape from the attackers. However, the Northside Newham gang were not satisfied with this yet, so they continued their search. They would spot a second man and clearly spend some time checking him out but it's believed that they abandoned the idea of attacking him because he looked older than the average gang member. While the gang was driving around, a young man would be seen leaving his home to go to a local shop at around 10.32. His name is David Gomer. At the time, he was a 24-year-old university graduate who worked for the NHS. His mother had also worked for the NHS and sadly his father had recently passed away. On this night, 
it was only two days away from his father's funeral. The gang driving around would eventually spot David on the streets of Nuremberg while he was walking and on the phone to his girlfriend. The gang would jump out of the car and approach him, asking, where are you from? Which was heard by David's girlfriend while she was on the phone. The gang would attack David who was just moments away from his house. David was stabbed 10 times by the gang. He would stagger to his front door and would collapse. Sadly, he would die just two days before his father's funeral. Four men have been convicted of the murder of a 24-year-old NHS worker, David Gomo, in what prosecutors described as a frenzied attack. The court heard Mr Gomo was randomly attacked by a gang as he walked to the shops in April last year. Libu Duseko reports now from the Old Bailey. A random murder of a young man with ambitions to make something of his life. Police say NHS worker David Gomo was killed by four men connected with a gang from North Newham simply because he lived in what they saw as enemy territory. 19-year-olds Mohamed Jello and David Toure, 23-year-old Vanya Koulibaly and a 17-year-old who can't be named for legal reasons were convicted after a six-week trial. David Gomo was a smart, hard-working and dedicated young man. He had graduated from university and worked at the NHS. David had no gang links and was, a lo was loved by many. He was murdered at random during a frenzied attack during the first pandemic lockdown. He was on the phone to his girlfriend when he was approached by his killers, who were unknown to him. The case has highlighted the tragedy that comes from postcode wars and gang rivalries. David was stabbed at least nine times, then managed to stagger to his home, but later died in hospital. The court was shown CCTV of the men attempting to attack another man less than an hour before. The defendants were convicted of conspiracy to cause GBH with intent for that offence. The wounds inflicted on David were so ferocious that they had severed arteries, damaged internal organs and cut through bone. Some wounds were up to 10 centimetres deep and five of them could have been fatal on their own. The attack was seen on CCTV. The group would flee in the car, but somehow the wheel would fall off the car which prompted them to walk home. Two of the killers, one of which was just 17 at the time, left their sunglasses in the car which had their DNA on them. This attack was brutal and undeserving to say the least. After the killing, two of the killers would be seen on CCTV high-fiving. One of the killers was caught on CCTV bragging to a friend that he had killed someone. And that would not even be the group's most costly mistake. One of the killers had literally drawn pictures of the murder step by step, including showing what kind of clothes they were wearing at the time of the attack and where it took place, including full-on dialogue in comic book style. A homicide detective would say that in his 20 years of service, he has never seen anything like this comic book style confession. The four killers' actions after this murder would clearly indicate that they did not care about the crime they had just committed. This was taken into consideration in court. Two of the killers were given 27 years, one was given 26 years and another was given 21 years as all were charged for murder. Interestingly, one of the people charged for this murder would turn out to have been present at the funeral of CJ. This shows that at least two of the people CJ was friends with were active gang members, willing to kill, presumably for revenge but at least to further the gang's interests. The murderous feud in Newham would continue. And this time, the person who was murdered would not be considered as a civilian, although he was just 15. On the morning of the 11th of December in 2020, a 15 year old named K. John Lubin would make a decision to steal an electric scooter. This scooter turned out to be owned by a gang member of a Northside Newham set. His street name is Vanco. Vanco would arm himself with a knife and go with one of his friends who was also armed to find the e-scooter. K. John's street name was K. Miz. So K. Miz, who had stole the scooter, was with his friend who was 28 at the time. The reason for their friendship is unclear, but it is again alleged that K. Miz was part of a Southside Newham based gang. Less than an hour later, the e-scooter would be stolen. Vanco would find K. Miz and his 28 year old friend talking to a small group of people. Vanco and his friend had masks on and would approach the group. One of them moved a backpack round to the front of their body so that they had quick access to pull a knife out. The pair of Northside members would arrive in Pier Parade Square to confront K Miz and friend about the scooter. This was only a short distance from K Miz's house. Almost immediately after the pair had arrived, all four had large knives in their hands, including the 15 year old K Miz. Both sets of the two would bounce around with, on their tiptoes side to side and occasionally one of them would step closer to their rivals and then step back quickly before any physical contact was made. But eventually the distance between the two groups would increase. This would result in the incident seemingly being over when K Miz had got a fair distance away and decided at a young age of just 15 to turn around and walk away with his friend. The two Northside members would also decide to walk away. K Miz was heading towards his home. Both he and his friend had put away their knives. 
they had begun to cross the road in an attempt to leave the area, but the two 17-year-old Northside members would change their mind about the retreat and would soon decide to follow Kamez and his friend. There was some shouting and somebody had shouted, wait there, which was presumably Vanko or his accomplice. So Vanko and his friend would sprint towards Kamez and his friend at full speed. Somebody would shout, run, but at this time, it was already too late. Kamez would see the attack come in and pulled out a knife from his coat and swung it at one of the Northside members. He would graze the cheek of one of his attackers, but would be stabbed twice. He and his friend would flee the scene and would make it into a local Nisa shop hoping they were safe, but Kamez would collapse in the shop. The shopkeeper called emergency services which seemingly prompted Kamez's friend to hide the knives that they both had in a nearby bin, which were later recovered by police. But bear in mind that he chose to do that instead of focusing on his 15 year old friend who had been stabbed. Sadly, Kamez, real name Kajon, would die at just 15 years old. The case would seem to be an obvious murder to anyone reading through the events, however, it would not be that simple. The judge would state these following facts. There was a significant degree of planning. The attackers instigated the incident. They were each armed with large knives making their attack considerably more serious. They were both masked to avoid detection. One had moved their backpack to have quick access to the knife. They intended on finding and seriously hurting Kamez, so this would look like it was an open and shut case of the murder. However, the judge would also say that they must give proper weight to the defendant's age and immaturity, and he would significantly reduce the sentence that would have been imposed on them if they were older. So in the end, the two killers were only sentenced to two years of prison time for violent disorder and having a bladed article. Those were their only charges. In fact, the friend of Kamez would also go to prison and would receive a 17 month sentence for carrying a knife. So the killers of a 15 year old boy both had almost the same sentence as somebody who was literally only carrying a knife and used it in a threatening motion. This is shocking to go through, but as Kamez clearly was armed, he had struck at one of the attackers it was clear to the judge and the jury and everybody involved that he had some sort of responsibility to play. I just cannot get my head around the fact that he, Kamez and his friend had walked away and were set upon again and there wasn't even a GBH with intent charge. The crime in Newham really shows how crazy the system can be. But earlier on, we spoke about Grinner, real name Abdul Jar, who was murdered. Some of the lyrics that I showed previously spoke about both Grinners being murdered and in a tragic tale, Grinner would not be the only person in his family to die due to this ongoing war in Newham. His younger brother, known as Y Grinner or Demon Dan, would also lose his life in tragic circumstances. Abu Bakr Jr. Jar was just 18 years old when he lost his life. It's not quite clear what kind of upbringing he would have had, but many people would speculate online that the death of his brother had made him become more actively involved in gang life perhaps wanting to feel closer to his fallen brother. He would seemingly spend a lot of time with active gang members of Southside Newham. Doing this and taking on the moniker of Y Grinner would make him a target by itself, but he would also have snippets of a rap video where he would diss the deceased rival. Try to claim BB ain't winning. Hey. Now who are you fucking kidding? My nigga, your heart ain't fucking in it. I can separate the raw from the rates. Niggas nowadays will kill to bit there. Like, niggas nowadays will snake that all. Mates, me and you were born different, we weren't born the same way. Uh, niggas make money on land, get the food concerned, that's a deal or rhythm. Like Ben Tenya were out on a mission if we see your up at the bit in a minute. You cost them bits, go through me and Rose in a fucking sick. Tell you guys it's a fucking bitch if you didn't run away, then you only got a hit. CJ got hit in his wig, that way he had that. I don't know where he is. Hey, my man got chopped in his wig, the butcher shop closed in a fucking sick. Their father would state that Abu Bakr, who was 14 when his older brother Grinner was killed, took the loss of his older brother badly and would repeatedly call his brother's mobile phone, praying that he would pick up. He was once a talented footballer who had played for Crystal Palace Academy. He also had a plan B of getting into property if football didn't work out. A friend who grew up with him said that he lost all motivation due to his brother's murder. His father, Mr. Jar, would say that he was a very quiet boy and then his behaviour started to change around 16. Due to not going to school through COVID times and the pressures of modern day life for teenagers, especially in that kind of environment, he would seem to spend more time in the streets of Southside Newham. Proof is that he would be spotted on social media chilling with Newham artist Young Bane. Yeah. 
At just 18 in 2021 on the 9th of April, the police were called to a report of fighting on a street in Custom House, Southside Newham. When they arrived, they would find the then 18-year-old Abu Bakr, aka White Grinner, with stab wound. However, another person was stabbed in this altercation, but it's unclear whether it was White Grinner's attacker. But reporters say neither victim made an allegation, which may indicate that White Grinner and the other person had stabbed each other. But there's nothing to suggest that White Grinner was caught with a knife at the time. After this took place, he would be taken to hospital and let out with pretty much no more intervention. It must have been known that he was the younger brother of a known gang member who was killed and would be targeted himself, but it seems like there was not much done in terms of prevention for the upcoming events that would take place just a couple of weeks later. So on April the 26th of 2021, Y Grinner would be ferociously attacked again, just yards away from his home. Nine people have been arrested and are being charged for being involved in this crime, showing that there was likely a lot of planning and coordination to get to him. Around 2.40pm, Y Grinner would be standing outside of his home address on the corner of another road. A dark SUV type jeep would pull up next to him. Y Grinner would appear to approach the passenger side of the car. As he does, he would be shot in the chest with a shotgun, and the driver of the jeep would leap out of the vehicle as Y Grinner lay on the floor he would proceed to viciously stab the 18 year old multiple times in the chest. He would then get back into the jeep and drive away, eventually crashing into a parked car. Despite paramedics arriving at the scene and doing the best that they could, tragically, Y Grinner was pronounced dead at 3.14 p.m. from shotgun and stab wounds to the chest. A young man seemingly lost in a place he is trapped in, losing his older brother and then his own life in an absolute brutal way. No parent should have to bury their children but for them to have lost two children in these horrific circumstances is shocking. A Reddit user named Dagnam Stepper had put up a picture showing the area depicting just how close the deaths of the two brothers were in distance. The distance literally looks like it's less than a minute walks away. Previously, we spoke about the fact that Grinner and Y Grinner had been disrespected in music since their death. One of the rappers, named S13 from Northside Newham, is one of the rappers who had dissed them. He also happens to be one of the nine who is currently being detained and charged with Y Grinner's murder. The charges were brought against him while he was already in prison for having shot at Young Bane previously. But we have to remember, he has not been found guilty of this crime yet. The crazy thing is that there are still many other deaths that have not been put into this video, but they are still a result of knife and gun crime in Newham. Plus, there's many, many more stabbings and shootings which haven't resulted in death. But they just cannot 100% be attributed to the ongoing war between Northside and Southside Newham. But it just goes to show you how dangerous the borough is for the residents of Newham that are, these are not even all of the stabbings, shootings and attacks that have taken place in the area. And the war does not seem to be over. There's still back and forths, whether musically or physically, with tit for tat stabbings and shootings to back and forth disses between rappers in the UK like Potter Paper, AB and CB allegedly throwing indirect. This whole story is even deeper than what you have just seen and heard. There are even more people associated to these areas, also internal conflicts in Northside and Southside, and way more rappers than mentioned who are affiliated. Plus, even more stuff which doesn't make the news or the blogs. Throughout this video, I've used information that is entirely public. All of the information on the actual crimes themselves are from news sources, so, I am just compiling this information for fans and for people who are interested in the topic to take in the gravity of this whole situation at an entry level. To go through and understand what these people are living like and how dangerous it is is impossible unless you are a resident living in these areas or in similar circumstances. Newham might just be one of the craziest places in England. Southside Newham versus Northside Newham. This bloody gang war has involved rappers such as Jay Huss, CB, Young Diz, Yanko, AB, Kojo Funds, Young Bane, S13, Striker, and arguably even Potter Paper and Mover. If you want to know what happened in Mover's case, make sure you check out my previous video. But this gang war is insane, with at least 10 people being murdered in cold blood in the war between 6th and 7th, and many more people being stabbed and shot, and other murders happening which aren't even related to this gang beef. Don't forget that a lot of these victims have been several innocent people. But if you are someone who's looking to make a change and you don't really know where to start, 
drop me an email or DM me and I will try to advise you as best as possible if you need help with building a CV or how to find work or how to get back into education. I know it doesn't seem like it, but trust me, there is always a way out. You have been watching Underworld Unmasked. But anyway, where should we go next? Comment below what wars, gangs or other criminal type content you want to see. Are you liking the long form content or do you want to stick to the videos that are really short? All feedback is much appreciated. Till next time, peace.